Okay, guys, the Zoom session is now being recorded. Um, so remember, for today, you're going to need a sheet of paper, well, several sheets of paper, and something to write with. Um, because you guys are, um, are going to be working along with me as we solve these problems. And then, after that, I'm going to leave you guys to do the problems by yourself. Yeah, you should have it now, um, Angelina. Uh, and I'm going to leave you guys to do it, do the problems yourself. And then um, those problems is, that you guys are going to finish up is what you guys are going to be turning in. Okay. So. So in Schoology, okay, uh, if you go to Schoology, let me click on. Um, the folder for today. So we're in the second week of this six weeks period. Today is Wednesday. Okay. Now in Schoology, um, you guys are gonna notice three things in Schoology. There's um, there's a formula chart. Um, there's the kinematics practice worksheet that we're gonna be working on today. And here's gonna here's a link for you guys to submit your assignment. Um, so, guys, on this worksheet, let me pull this up so you guys can see this. So, there's there's going to be a total of 15 word problems that you guys are going to be responsible for doing. Um, a few of these we're going to work out in class. Uh, we might work out seven or eight of them, depending on how far we get. And the rest you're going to do by yourselves. Okay. So guys, please have a pen and paper next to you so that as I'm working out these problems, you guys are working along with me because you guys will need um, you guys uh, will need to be writing everything out because you're going to be submitting your work on today. Um, so basically, uh, what you have what you guys have to submit, you have to submit um, not only the answer. But uh, well, not only the solutions, but also the proof of how you got to your solutions, along with your units. Um, and again, it's going to be done on your own paper. Um, by the way, guys, um, um, you do not have to write the questions. The questions are already given, so don't worry about writing the questions. The only thing that I'm asking for is I want to see your solutions, and I want to sh um, I want to see the proof of your solutions. In other words, I want you to show your work, uh, and also include all of your units. Um, again, we're going to work out about half of these together in class, and the rest you're going to do by yourselves. Okay, so that's the goal for today. So be sure you are writing along with me. And guys, while I'm working on these problems, please, if you have any questions, if there's a if if, if there's confusion on something, please don't hesitate to stop me and um, to chime in and to ask your question. Um, because remember, I am here to help you. I am here to assist you. Okay, uh, let me see. Something else I wanted to say, my mind just went blank. Uh, it'll come back to me. Oh yeah, this link right here, this is what you're gonna click on for your um, for your submission, guys. You're going to take a picture of your work. So um, all the problems, one through 15, um, take a picture of it and upload it into Schoology and that will count as your grade for today. Okay, so everybody understand what is expected of you all today? Yes. So the assignment is going to be posted like during class. Um well we're gonna we're gonna only work out a few of the problems during class. The rest you're gonna finish on your own. And as soon as you get done with it, just post um your work. But yeah, we're gonna so there's fifteen problems. We're probably gonna work with like seven or eight of them during class. But the rest you're going to do your own. But you're going to you, you are going to post all the problems in Schoology one through fifteen. Does that make sense, Jeremiah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're just going to take a picture and you're going to submit it, and then that will count as your credit. Okay. Uh, the reason why I gave this video to you guys first to watch, and hopefully everybody got a chance to watch this video, is I thought this guy um, going over this video he did a really good job of explaining. Um, how to label what's important in your equation 
and when to know which equation to use. Now, uh, we know there are a total of four main kinematic equations, but even though there are four main kinematic equations, there are only three of them given to you all on your formula chart. And of course, on your formula chart, uh, these equations look like this. Mm -hmm. So these equations look like this on your formula chart. So these are three of the four kinematic equations that you're going to need that you're going to need for the AP exam. Um, even though there are four total, three are given to you all on the test. Well, when you take the AP test in May, that you're just going to need these three. Um, I like the way he wrote the equations on the video because the equations in the video. Uh, they don't look as complicated. Um, I don't know why the College Board decides to complicate these equations. Uh, but basically, what I did was let me let me pull up this PowerPoint. Uh, I created a PowerPoint comparing the two forms of the equation, just so everyone's clear on what everything means. So let me share my screen here. Uh, so this is the form of the equations that he wrote um, on that video that I posted for Ed Puzzle. Um, and of course, you guys have to know what all of these terms mean. And by the way, guys, I want to make something very clear. Um, you can only use these equations for situations that involve constant acceleration. I'm going to say that again. You can only use this equation if the situation that you're dealing with involves constant acceleration. Okay. So if it involves constant acceleration, you can use these for your work problems. Um, you guys obviously know what V stands for. Basically, V stands for velocity, or in other words, the final velocity or the final speed of the object. Um, remember what I told you guys with this zero symbol here, right? Um, what the zero means. Anytime you see the zero, basically this represents your initial conditions. So what this is saying is this is your initial velocity. In other words, the velocity of the object at time zero. So just remember that whenever you guys see this little symbol here, it looks like a zero. That stands for your initial conditions. So final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration multiplied by time. Okay. In this equation right here, there's a delta x. From your math classes, do you guys remember what delta means? Guys, what does delta stand for? Anyway? I don't remember. For math? No. Delta stands for change. That's something you guys should remember because that's that's a that's something that you guys want to see in your math. The delta symbol is something you're going to see a lot in your math classes. So this right here represents delta position, or in other words, change in position. Um, change in position just basically means your just basically means the object's displacement. So. Uh, Change in position is equal to initial velocity times time plus one half times acceleration times time squared. So here the time gets squared. Okay. Uh, and of course, we also see delta x here in this equation right here where delta x represents a, t a change in position. Uh, now, guys, this is how the equations look like on the um, on that video that I posted. And it, it also looks like this in most textbooks. But on the AP exam... The, the equations look like this. Uh, just know that they mean the same thing. Um, uh, right here, um, when they put V of X, I believe they put this subscript X right here to represent that you're dealing with one dimensional motion. Um, so for an object moving in one dimension. So for example, if you have an object that's accelerating along the horizontal plane, in other words, along the X direction, what this is saying is, the final velocity in, in the x direction is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction plus the acceleration in the x direction times time. Um, and of course, guys, I want you guys to know that these equations, these equations not only work for the horizontal direction, they also work for objects that are moving in the vertical direction as well. So if you have, if you throw a ball up or if a ball is coming down, they also work um, in the vertical direction. But in that case, instead of dealing with x, we're dealing with y. So for the vertical direction, this will be the Final velocity in the y direction is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction plus acceleration in the y direction multiplied by t. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, but of course, uh, for the most part, and most of the problems, we're dealing with the horizontal direction, uh, one, one dimension along the x plane. But again, these equations also work for the vertical plane as well. Um, and of course, uh, here are the equations side by side, so you can see the comparison. Again, they give you these three on the AP exam, uh, but there are a total of four kinematic equations that you see in most physics textbooks. Um, just know that they mean the same thing. These are the equations I want to be dealing with today. Um, you know, this looks complicated for most students. All of these subscripts just looks complicated. Um, I don't know why, again, I don't know why the College Board wants to complicate things. But just, guys, remember what delta x means. Delta x means change in position. Delta means change. So this is change in position. What is your change in position? It's your final position minus your initial position. In other words, it represents the total displacement of the object. Okay. Um, sometimes these equations, you guys will see these equations. Um, I've seen some physics textbooks write these equations like this. Uh, where here, this is the equation. This right here represents the equation in red. Where instead of putting delta x, they'll just put d for displacement. Um, just know that they mean the same thing. So initial velocity times t plus 1 half times at squared. Uh, again, these are various forms you can see the equation depending on what physics textbook you may read. Okay, so with that said, uh, let us just do some examples uh, utilizing these equations. And these are our four, basic our four basic kinematic equations for situations involving constant acceleration. So... Okay, let me let me go ahead and close this PowerPoint. Okay, let me close that. Okay. So there are a total of 15 problems, and why is it not? Oh, here it is. Yeah. Okay. So guys, we're going to um, um, work on a few of these problems together. Um, guys, if you have a calculator, please pull it out because you're going to need a, you, you will need a calculator uh, because we're about to do a lot of algebra and a lot of computations here. So if I were you, I will have my calculator right next to me okay uh, so again I'm just going to walk you guys how to do this how to do these problems and again I'm going to use the method that he used um, in that Ed puzzle video so let us look at number one everybody got everybody got their pen and paper ready mm -hmm. okay great so number one says a runner accelerates to 4.2 meters per second for 10 seconds before win before winning the race. How far did, she, did he or she run? Okay, now guys, in that video um, um, that I posted, one of the things that the guy told you all to do before you begin solving these problems, and again, I really like this approach, um, he told you all to get in a habit of labeling what all of your variables are and plugging in the numbers for those variables. So guys, for every problem that you do, it's a good idea to write all five variables that you could possibly see off to the side here. Okay. So it's a good idea to do that for every problem. This is what something he did in that video. Okay. Now, once we've um, written all of our variables, let's begin um, um, filling in our numerical values for the important variables. So, it's, so it says a runner accelerates to 4.2 meters per second for 10 seconds before winning the race. How far did he or she travel? Okay, so guys, we're given the rate of acceleration, 4.2 meters per second squared. Remember, anytime you see meters per second squared, you know that's acceleration. So let's let's fill that in. So 4.2 meters per second, that's what meters per second squared. We're given that in the problem for acceleration. Okay. 
Um, what else are we also given? We're also given the time. And what is our time? Our time is clearly 10, 10 seconds. Yep, 10 seconds. Guys, please write your units with your, um, with your variables as well. Okay. Now, guys, I'm going to tell you guys right now, in the problem, if it does not tell you your initial velocity, it is perfectly okay to assume the runner started with initial velocity of zero. In other words, that's how fast he was moving um, the moment he began accelerating. He, was, he wasn't moving at all. He was at risk. So the runner started from risk. So the initial velocity was zero meters per second. Okay. And guys, what does it sound like we're solving for? How far did she or he run? How far? Does it sound like we're solving for delta x or does it sound like we're solving for the final velocity? What do y'all think? How far? The final? The final velocity. How far? It's delta. It's delta x. It's the, the, remember, delta x is the change in position. In other words, it's the displacement. So how far he ran is what we're trying to find. Uh, right. Jeremiah, if it, said, if it said how fast was he running, uh, um, then that would be a velocity. But it didn't say how fast. It said how far. Right. See the difference? Yes, I see the difference. Yeah. So we're looking for delta x. Delta x just means change in position, or in other words, the displacement of the object. Okay. Um, so now, guys, now off this side here, I've listed every important variable. Uh, where I, well, I listed every variable that is important to this problem. Um, um, the final velocity is not even important here, so we don't have to worry about that. So, guys, let me ask you a question. Which equation off to the side here um, lists the four important variables we're going to need in our problem? The equation in yellow, the equation in, in red, the equation in blue, or the equation in green? What do y'all think? Yellow. Ooh, it's not the equation in yellow because look, I'm telling you why it's not the equation in yellow because the equation in yellow oh, has the final it. velocity. And notice, what did I just say? The final velocity is not important to this problem. Is it red? The equation in red is what we're going to be using. Yeah. So uh, um, we're looking for delta x. That's what, that's what we're trying to solve for. So that's clearly important to our problem. And we're given everything else. So we're going to use the equation in red. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and write the equation in red, and I'm going to fill everything in. So... So we know delta x is equal to initial velocity multiplied by t plus one half multiplied by acceleration times t squared. Okay. Now let's just fill everything in. We're trying to solve for delta x, so we're going to leave that as it is. Okay. The initial velocity of the object is clearly zero. You see that here. And remember, zero times some number is just zero. So this whole thing here is just zero. Plus, okay, and I'm going to put this in parentheses here. Remember, guys, one half is the same thing as 0. 0.5. So I'm going to put 0. 0.5 times acceleration. And what is my acceleration? It's 4.2. Okay. All of that multiplied by 10 squared. And guys, you're just squaring the 10. You know, time is the only thing that gets squared here. So um, I, if I would put this in my calculator, I would do 10 squared times 4.2 times 0.5. Can someone tell me what you guys got for your answer? Okay, I have a question. Do you mind yes. going back? Yeah, I am. Miss, I got the answer. What did you get? I um I uh well I got two different answers. I got the um I got final velocity, which was forty two ms, and but the speed was I mean. Not speed. Well, we're looking for displacement. So, what did you get for your displacement? A displacement. Or the, the our delta x. What did you get for that? 
Delta X. I I saw my equation different from y'all. What did you use? Hmm. I use. Hmm. Can I put the equation in the chat box? Okay, I'm looking at what you sent me now. It's it it seems like um um. I see what you did. You saw for the final velocity first, and then you saw for the displacement, right? Yeah, that's how I was taught to do it in, yeah. um, in my last school. Okay. You could have done that, uh, uh, and you're right. It is 210 meters, but I'm going to tell you what you did. What you did required extra steps. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's right. It's still right, but you uh, you took the long way. Um, yeah, it makes the long way is easier for me. That's fine. If it works for you, uh, but yeah, it's two hundred and ten meters. Uh, but yeah, guys, delta x is two hundred and ten meters. Uh, it looked to me like uh, uh, it looked to me you saw for you saw for um, um, the final velocity first, and then you plugged that into another equation to solve for delta x. You could have done that. Yeah, you could have done that, or we just could have just used the equation red to solve for delta x. Either way, if, I mean, as long as you get the right answer, you're good. Uh, so it's 210 meters. Okay. And guys, please be sure you always put your units. Any questions on this one? Mr. Taylor? Yes. How did you know to use the red um the red equation? Yeah, so okay, so um Look at all the, okay, do you see all these variables that we have listed off to the side? Yes. Okay, so uh, notice that the only important variable, so, uh, well, the only variable that was not important to this problem was the final velocity. We weren't even concerned with that because they didn't even give us that in the problem. Not only did they not give it to us, it's not what we're looking for. We're asked to, be in, we're asked to solve for delta x. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to go off to the side here and you're going to look for the equation that includes all of these important variables. Okay. Notice it's not the equation in yellow because the equation in yellow that includes final velocity, right? And so that's not even important to the problem. So you can cross out you can cross out this equation because it's not important. Um now you see this middle equation here in blue? That also mm -hmm. includes the final velocity. So that's not even important. Uh, this equation right here also includes the final velocity, so that's not important. The only thing that's left that includes all these variables is this middle equation that, that has delta x, our initial velocity, time, and our acceleration. Does that make sense? Yes, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. So you're looking for you're looking for the equation that includes all of the important variables to the problem. And here, final velocity was not even important. Okay, guys, let's keep going. Let's um, y'all got that written down. Can I move on to number two? Yeah. Again. Can I move on to number two? Yeah. Okay. Wait, real quick. Can you go back up to number one, real quick? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, I'm good. I screenshotted it. Okay. Wait, so you don't have to find the velocity? It did not ask for velocity, so no, you don't have to find it. It didn't ask me for it. Okay. Yeah. It didn't ask for it. It didn't mention it or anything like that. So you don't have to find, you, you don't, you can just, you know, you can ignore that. Okay. Any other questions? Number two, number two says an airplane accelerates down a runway at 3.2 meters per second squared for um, 32.8 seconds until it finally lifts off the ground. Determine the distance traveled before takeoff. Okay. Um, so uh, before I do this problem, 
Um, again, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna write down all five of my variables. So, and again, it, it's a good idea to do this in every problem um, because that was that was one of the things he showed you guys on that Ed Puzzle video that I posted. Okay, guys, so there, there are five variables um, um, involved in these kinematic equations. And so what we want to do first, we want to, we, we want to determine which variable is important, I mean, which, uh, which of these five variables are important in order to, to determine which equation to use. Um, by the way, let me draw a picture of what's happening here because I think I think sometimes it helps seeing a picture. Um, so. Uh, we have a we have a really long runway here. Yeah, let me. So imagine we have a really long runway, uh, and we have an airplane accelerating down this runway. Let me do my best to draw an airplane. So uh, the airplane starts off over here. So, you know, that's my airplane. So the airplane starts off over here and then and it accelerates and races down the runway. And at this point right here is just it's just where the airplane is about to take off. So here's this takeoff point right here. So this is where the airplane takes off. Okay. Uh, and so this right here will represent the initial velocity of the airplane at this point, and this right here represents the final velocity of the airplane at that point. And we know the rate of acceleration. The rate of acceleration from here to here is 3.2 meters per second because that's given to us in the problem. Okay. So you the question is... Yeah, what did I say? Uh, you said 3.20 meters per second? 3.2 3 meters per second squared is the acceleration. Uh, so now let, let's just fill everything in. Um, so it accelerates down a runway at 3.2 meters per second squared. So meters per second squared, you obviously know that's acceleration. So we're going to fill this in. So 3.2 meters per second squared. Okay. Um, it's your acceleration. Okay. What else are we given here, guys? What What is this right here? 32.8. That is the time. So always write your units. 32.8 seconds is your time. Okay. And um, uh, by the way, guys, um, what are we assuming is the initial velocity of the airplane just before it starts going? Zero. Yeah, we're going to assume the initial velocity is zero. Yeah. Um, they did not give us a final velocity because we don't see anything written in meters per second, so we don't see a final velocity. But what are we asked to determine? We're asked to determine distance. So what does that sound like, distance? What does that sound like to you? Delta x, in other words, the change in position. Okay. So again, final velocity is not even important to this problem. Um, so once again, just like before, it looks like we're going to have to find the equation um, we're going to have to find the correct equation to use for this problem that includes all of our four important variables, and that is the red equation, just like before. Okay. So here's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to plug everything in and tell me what you got for your answer. So go ahead and do that. I want y'all to get in the habit of doing the math yourself. Okay, so as soon as y'all get the answer, if y'all want to write it in the chat box, or if you want to let me know, just tell me. So again, you're using the equation in red to find delta x.
And guys, if you if, if you want, um, someone asked me about rounding. Um, if you want to be consistent, feel free to round to the to the second decimal place. Oh, right. Two. Okay, Angelina, I see you just sent me the message. I see, I, Angelina, I see you sent me the answer privately, and that is correct. For, for, for privately, huh? Well, she messes me privately. She she messes me privately. Some students want to message me privately. Some students can put it in the chat box publicly. It's up to you. But yeah, Angelina, you are correct. Good job. Um, Rash Rashana, am I saying your name right? Rashana. Yeah. Rashana, what school did you come from? Um, Kathy Gillum Collegiate Academy. Got you. See, you guys. Um. 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 I don't know if you know this, but DeSoto started um, two weeks behind most schools. So you guys were probably ahead of us. It look, look, well, it looks like you guys were ahead of us when um, you guys left. I mean, um, we were learning about the same thing. Well, it's because we started kind of late, too. Oh, y'all did? So we was on acceleration, too. Gotcha. Yeah, well, our school started way late. <laughs> not, uh, Rashana, not only did we start late, um, we've only been meeting up. Well, prior to, prior to this week, we've only been meeting up on Zoom for twice a week, an hour for each session. So we're like we're probably way behind other schools. <laughs> Did y'all at y'all old school have y'all guys started on forces yet? Um, forces. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be starting that either next week or week after next. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, some of you guys are sitting. Uh, yes. Could you go back to that number two card? Yes. Okay, guys, some of you all are sending me the wrong answer. You you guys should have got one thousand seven hundred and twenty-one point three four meters. Um, Can you say that again? I'm gonna write it down. You guys should have gotten this. Did you remember the square of your time? So 32.8 squared times 3.2 times 0.5, right? You're using you're using this equation to read it. See, I can't. I don't know where the square button is. On on your phone calculator? Yes. You know, um, if you if you turn the phone sideways, there should be a like. I love my phone. Hold on, let me let, let, let me start to pull up my phone here. Oh shoot! Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. I don't know if you see my key, but like if you if, if you turn the if you turn the phone sideways, hold on, let me see if I can. If you turn the phone, no, y'all can't see that. Yeah, if you turn the phone sideways, you should see the square key somewhere. You should. Okay. It depends on the phone. Yeah. Mr. Taylor, what equation were we supposed to use for solving? For number two, you're, you're using the red equation. Stephanie, do you know why you're using the red equation? Yes. Yeah. To find delta X. Yeah, you're trying. Well, you're trying to find. You're trying to find delta x, um, and also you want to use an equation that does not include final velocity. All right. So, um, any equation that does not include final velocity. Final velocity is not even important to the problem. So you're using the red equation. Okay, thank you. Guys, did everyone get this answer here? Can I move on? Wait, I want to see first. Yeah, be sure you get what I got. Because again, whenever you guys are doing this by yourselves, I want to be sure you guys understand how to do this. Uh, Mrs. Taylor? Yes? Um, my stuff like disconnected for a second. Can you repeat that? I was just, I just, I was just asking that everybody get this answer here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got, I got that. Yes, sir. Okay, let's move on to number three. Uh, number three says a race car accelerates uniformly from eighteen point five meters per second to forty six point one meters per second in two point four seven seconds. Determine the acceleration of the car and the distance traveled. Uh, 
Okay. So guys, uh, we're basically looking for two things here. We're looking for acceleration and distance travel. Okay. So we're going to take this one step at a time. We're going to find the acceleration first. And then after we find the acceleration, we're going to look for distance travel. Okay. So acceleration is going to be the first thing we're going to look for. Remember, guys, in order to in order to figure out which equation to use, always label all five of your variables off to the side here, and then figure out which variables are important to the specific problem. Okay, so it says a race car accelerates from 18.5 meters per second to 46.1 meters per second. Okay, so guys, notice we're given the initial velocity. The initial velocity is 18.5 meters per second. And of course, guys, what is the final velocity? 46.1. Mm hmm. Forty six point one meters per second. And two point four seven. What does that sound like to you guys? That sounds like the what? The look at the units. Time. The time. Okay. And it says determine the acceleration. So for now the the, the main thing we're looking for is acceleration. So that's the first part of the problem. Okay, we want to find acceleration. Okay. So, guys, notice uh, there are four important variables in this problem here. Initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. Guys, look at the equations, um, um, the yellow, red, blue, and green equation. Out of those equations, which equation includes all four of these variables, which is going to enable us to solve for acceleration? What do y'all think? The yellow, red, blue, or green? Okay, James, it's not blue. I'm gonna tell you why it's not blue. Yellow? Yeah, because it's it's not blue because you don't see you don't see acceleration anywhere in this equation. Like so, like um, so it's right, and acceleration is important because that's what we're solving for. So it's not the blue equation. Uh, what is okay? Stephanie said it's the yellow equation. Yeah, it's it's definitely the yellow equation because the yellow equation includes the final velocity, initial velocity. Acceleration and time. So we're going to use the we're going to use the yellow equation to solve for acceleration. Remember, acceleration is probably the most important thing because that's what we're trying to find. So I'll put a question mark there. So we're going to use the yellow equation. What can I? Uh, you can't really see that yellow too well. I mean, just go ahead and use black. Okay, so guys, um, using the yellow equation. Which basically says that, let me see if I can make this a little bigger. Okay, so the yellow equation. So final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So the final velocity is 46.1. The initial velocity. Is 18.5. Okay, I'm going to leave the acceleration in A because that's what we're trying to find. And the time is, um, is 2.47 seconds. So, So now, guys, the goal is to solve this equation for A. So everybody in here should know how to do this algebra. Uh, yeah, Stephanie, that's right. Just to be sure everybody knows how to do this algebra, you know, experience has taught me I have to go over algebra with some of you guys. Uh, so let me... You know, let me go over this. So how do I get rid of this? In order to get A by itself, how do I get rid of 18.5 to the side equal sign? What do I do, guys? You have to cancel it out. By by doing what? Um, 
What's the opposite of addition? Subtraction. Yeah. So I got it. Could you subtract 18 point? Yeah. Yeah. So 18.5. That goes away. Whatever you do, one side of the equal sign. I mean, you have to do to the other side. Other side. So what is it? 46.1 minus 18.5. So that gives me 27.6 is equal to A multiplied by 2.47. Now, guys, everyone in here should know how to solve this equation for A. How do I solve, how do I get A by itself now? You have to divide. You have to divide. Yeah. By 27.6. Yeah. And then whatever you do one side, you have to do the other. So, yeah, guys, um, I think you guys get the point. Once you do that, everybody should got an acceleration value of 11.17 meters per second squared. Please be sure to include your unit. Hold on. Let me check to see if I've got that. Yeah, go ahead, check. Please check. Because whenever you guys are doing these problems yourselves, you guys don't have to know how to do this. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So guys, now that I have acceleration, guess what I can do? I can go back up here now and I can actually list what my acceleration is because I know what my acceleration is in this problem. Hmm. Why is it not letting me erase? Anyway, I don't know why it's not letting me erase. So the acceleration is 11... 0.17 meters per second squared. Okay. Okay. So now, guys, um, guys, now that you have acceleration, um, the the last thing that it asks you to find, it asks you to solve for the displacement, or in other words, the distance travel. So in other words, it's asking you to solve for delta x. But check this out, guys. Uh, because we're including, because we now know all of these variables. Guess what? You can use any equation here to find delta x except for the yellow equation. So, guys, go ahead and do that. Um, use, in, use any one of these equations that you want. Plug everything in and solve for delta x, the displacement. Again, you can use the red equation. You can use the blue equation. You can use the green equation. It does not matter. The only equation you can't use is the yellow equation because the delta x isn't included there. So, guys, tell me what you guys get. Can you go back to the formula, please? Yeah. And you said we can use what formula? You can use you, you uh, Jeremiah. I said you have a you have enough information to use either one of these equations except for the yellow one, right. right? Because think about it, you can you you can use the red equation, and that'll tell you delta x. But you can also use the blue equation, and that'll also tell you delta x. You can use the green equation, rearrange it, and solve for delta x. You can use either one of these equations to help you solve for delta x. All right. When y'all solve for it, let me know what y'all get. Anyone want to tell me what y'all got for Delta X? Let me check. Let me check the chat box. See if anybody's sending me messages. Stephanie, I'm confused with your question. What do you mean the approximation symbol? What do you mean? You know that symbol that has like a squiggly? No, no. You, I mean, you don't have to. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, you don't have. You don't have to. Are you saying do we do we approximate it because we're rounding? Yeah. 
Um, you don't have to. Um, it's, it's up to you. Okay, I, I'm seeing some students who are sending me the answers properly. Some of you guys are sending me 79.76. Some of you guys are sending 79.77. You guys are correct. If you guys got something in the ballpark of 79.7 something, you're, you are right. I know some people got like 79.8. Like again, you know, 79.76, 79.77. You guys are all correct. If you got something in the ballpark, you are right. Okay. Um, Angelina, you are correct. 79.78. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm calling y'all names out and y'all message me privately. Hope y'all don't mind. <laughs> but yes, Angelina, you are correct. Uh, by using the blue formula. For those of you guys who messaged me, I'm just curious. What formulas did y'all use? I see, Angelina, you said you used the blue formula. Uh, anybody else want to tell me? I just want to be sure everybody's, you know, Okay, Rashana, um, um, Rashana, you used the blue formula. Okay. Did anybody use the red formula? Okay, thank you, Sakari. You used the red formula. And you got 79.76. That's fine. Okay. So somebody... somebody... 79.765. Okay, there you go. As long as you got in that ballpark somewhere around 79.7, .7, you are good. I used the red formula, by the way. You used the, which one? The red one? Yeah. Perfect. All right. Let's keep going. What did you say, Jeremiah? Uh, I wasn't on mute. No. What did you say? I didn't hear you. I said it feels good being right. It does feel good being right. It feels good for me, too, when you guys are right. I have a question, and this yes. isn't really by way. Um, is there a unit for the delta x? Yes, meters, because it's, it's a okay. it's a change in position. Okay. Yeah, that's what Thank delta you. delta x means change in position, or the words displacement. So it, it's just meters. You're welcome. Okay, guys, let, let us go to the fourth one. Stephanie, why is that weird? What's weird, Stephanie? I, I didn't Say it again. Did you get the right answer? Say that one more time. What did you get? Well, do you do you understand how um do you understand the problem, Stephanie? Are you good? Did you say yes? She told me to say she's breaking in and out. Okay. Oh, you're good, Roshana. You're fine. Okay. Um, number. You got it? Okay, perfect. So, number four says, um, a feather is dropped on the moon from a height of 1.4 meters. The acceleration of gravity on the moon is 1.67 meters per second squared. Determine the time for the feather to fall to the surface of the moon. So, let us just write out. Remember, guys, it's, it's a good idea to write out your five variables so that you can fill them in with their correct numerical values. Because again, this this uh, um, this will give you a good idea how to determine which equation to use. Okay, so it says, a feather is dropped on the moon from a height of 1.4 meters. Guys, what does that sound like to you? 1.4 meters, which of these variables is that? A velocity? No, it would, no, no Jeremiah, it would be velocity if the units are meters per second. But the units are just meters. So it's not so velocity. Distance, right? Delta, X. delta X, exactly. So delta X is your uh, is your change in position, or in other words, your displacement. Okay. Yeah, Jeremiah, if, Jeremiah, if it's just in meters, it's delta X. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
So 1.4 meters is your uh, um, is the displacement. Um, and we know, and, and think about it this way: the the feather was dropped from a height of 1.4 meters before it went to, before it hit the ground. So the height, um, the height that the feather was released from, represents the object's displacement because the object was displaced from here to here. Okay, so the height is the displacement here, it's delta x. The acceleration of, of the gravity on moon on the moon is 1.67 meters per second squared. So guys, what? So where do I put that here? Which variable? 1.67 meters per second squared. So where does that go? It's a velocity. It is not a velocity because it it will be velo it, it it will be velocity if it was just meters per second. But this is meters per second squared. That's what. That's acceleration. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember, meters per second squared is acceleration. Okay. And by the way, guys, what are we going to assume the initial velocity is? The moment the feather was released, the initial velocity was what? Zero. Zero. Mm-hmm. Determine the time for the feather to hit the ground. Okay. So we're looking for time. Okay. So guys, which equation, look, look, looking at the top here, which equation we're going to use here? Remember, final velocity is not important in this problem. Um, so are we going to use the equation in yellow, the equation in red, the equation in blue, or the equation in green? Which equation includes all four of these variables? Green, this one, this one, yellow. this one. Um, not yellow, because red. yellow yellow doesn't have displacement. We notice displacement is important. It's the, the one in red, exactly. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's the one in red. All right, because, um, again, you're looking for the equation that includes all the variables that are important to the problem. Okay, so it is the equation in red. Okay. Now, just to be sure that I don't run out of room, let me be sure I, um, I write this down at the top here. So using the equation in red, Again, guys, in order to know which equation to use, you look at all the important variables here that we that we labeled. Um, clearly, delta x is important. That was given. Initial velocity is important. Acceleration is important. And we're looking for time. So that's clearly important. So the, the, the red equation is the only one that includes all four of those variables. So here, so let me write this down. So delta x is equal to initial velocity times t plus one half times a t squared. Okay, so let's plug everything in. Delta x is 1.4. Okay, the initial velocity is zero. Okay, All right, because um, zero times some number is just zero. Plus, okay, I'm gonna put 0.5 to represents one half. All of that multiplied by one point. Let me let me make this bigger here, so I have more room to write. All of that multiplied by one point six seven. All of that multiplied by times squared. So time gets squared. Okay. And that's 1.67. Is everybody following me so far? I just filled out. Yeah. Filled out my equation. So remember, the goal is to solve for time. We want to get T by itself. So let's just keep going. 1.4 is equal to, um, so 0 plus 0.5 times 0.1 times 1.67. I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two. 0. 0.5 times 1.67. So 0. 0.5 times 1.67. That's um, 0. 0.835 
times t squared. Okay. Guys, if you're sending me private messages, I can't see it right now because I'm sharing my screen. But as soon as I get done, I'm going to check those. Okay, so guys, let us keep going. Remember, the goal is to get t by itself. In order to get t by itself, how do we get rid of this 0.835? You have to. What's the opposite of multiplication? Div divided. Yep. We have to divide 0.835. That goes away. And of course, whatever you do one side, you have to do to the other. So if I do, if I do 1.4 divided by 0.835. Huh. That gives me that gives me one point six. Um, uh, it gives me basically one point six eight is equal to t squared. Hold on, give me just a second, guys. I got one more step. How do I get rid of this squared here? Square root or something like that. Take the square root exactly. Yes, who was it that had a question for me? We, how did you get 0. 0.835? Oh, 0. 0.5 times 1.7, 1.67. Right, because this is one half times acceleration times t squared. So I just took one half, which is 0. 0.5 times one, because I plugged in 1.67. I multiply those two to get 0. 0.835. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And um, rounding my number, I got 1.3 seconds for my time. Um, so 1.29, 1.3, 1.3 seconds is my time. Wait. Yeah. Can you go back to where the time was squared? Yes. 1.29. That's the same thing. 1.29 is just rounded off to 1.3. Yeah. So it's, I'm sorry? So you just put in the square root of 1.68? Yep. Yeah. The, the square root of 1.68 gives me 1.3. Yeah. Right? Because because you're right, um, Jeremiah. In order, in order to get rid of that square, I need to take the square root. Remember, remember if I take the square root of this side of the sign, I take the square root of that side. Right? Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. Does that make sense? Let me check my. Yes, it makes sense. I got one point twenty nine six. Yeah. But it rounds up to one point three. Yep. I see. I see someone sent me a message. Will this be on YouTube? Yes, this video will be uploaded on YouTube. All of the problems won't be on YouTube, but um, because we're not going to do, we're not going to get to all fifteen today. But um, the ones we work out will be on YouTube. And yeah. And again, I just want to, you know what? Um, let me go ahead and write this out because I, I don't want students to get confused here. Um, all I did was here, in order to get 1.3, guys, all I did was just take the square root of t. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Uh, basically, the, one point, the square root of 1.68 is equal to t. And that's how I got. 1.3 seconds for my time. Just wanted um, wanted that to be clear to you guys. Guys, the nice thing about physics is that physics is a good review of algebra, right? <laughs> Yay. Was that sarcasm? <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, algebra is important. For what? Oh, man. Don't get me started on that. Am I going to go to Walmart and have to use algebra? You might. Put it this way. Um, the last time my mom bought a car and she wanted to um, figure out and, and, and she wanted to figure out um, 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 if the banks were um, um, 
were giving her the correct interest rates and the correct values, she came to me because she knew I knew algebra. So, you know, and she said, I, you know, I wish I had paid attention in school, but then I wouldn't know how to do these calculations myself. So, yeah, you never know when you might have to use it. Well, I'm just make sure my son paid attention in school. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stephanie, what does FR stands for? It stands for for real. Oh, for real about what? What did I say? Okay. If we were going to use it at Walmart. What? If we were going to use it at Walmart. Oh, if you're going to use it at Walmart. No, you might you might not use it in Walmart, but you, you you're going to use it at some point. Uh, like like the, the example that I gave you guys, whenever you're you know calculating your interest rate um, or your payment over the next several years, you know that would involve algebra. Okay, let's look at number five. Uh, number five says a bullet leaves a rifle with a muzzle velocity of 521 meters per second while accelerating through the barrel of the rifle. The bullet moves a distance of 0.84 meters. Determine the acceleration of the bullet. So. You know, this problem here, I like this problem. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and draw my gun first so you guys can get an idea of what's going on. So we have a rifle here. So let me draw my really long gun, my rifle. So that's my gun. Then that's my trigger. Okay. So guys, just to explain what's happening here. If you have a bullet, if you have a bullet right here, the bullet's initially at risk and you fire the bullet, the bullet travels all the way down um, the length of this rifle here. And here, this is where it exits. And the problem says that the bullet exits um, um, the muzzle with a velocity of 521 meters per second. So basically what we're trying to find, we're trying to find the acceleration of the bullet from here to here. That's what we're trying to find, the acceleration of the bullet. That's what we've been asked to calculate. So let us go ahead and write, um, let us go ahead and write the important variables to this problem. Okay, so it says a bullet leaves a rifle with a muzzle velocity of 521 meters per second. Okay, so guys, 521 meters per second, that was the velocity of the object when it left the muzzle right here. So that was its final velocity, um, assuming its initial velocity here was zero. So its final velocity was 521 meters per second. Okay. Um, the initial velocity, what did I just say, guys? When the, when, when the bullet is right here, before it was fired, the initial velocity is just what? Zero. Yep, zero meters per second. Okay. And, guys, it says the bullet moves a distance of 0.84 meters. So what is this 0.84 meters? Which, well, what is that? Is that the delta X? Yep, that's delta X. That is the the displacement, in other words. Del yes, the Point eight four meters. And what are we asked to solve for, guys? Acceleration. Yep, we're asked to solve for acceleration. So, guys, um, so out of all the variables that we listed, these are the only four variables that are important to the problem. Guys, notice time is not even important in this problem here. So, guys... Which equation you're going to use? I'm going to give you a hint. You're going to look for the equation that does not include time. Green. The green equation. Green. Exactly. You guys got it. So right. So this equation includes time. This equation includes time. This equation includes time. You're going to use the green equation because time is not even important to the problem. And so the green equation does not include time. Okay. So we're going to use this equation to solve for acceleration. Okay. So I'm so knowing we use using the green equation, I'm gonna make everything bigger here. And let's just let's just plug everything in. Oh guys. <laughs> I'm talking, I'm spinning on my screen. 
มาเบสก็ no one's in the room with me you know when you're just talking and just stuff coming out your mouth let me find green here okay so we got um plugging everything in so plugging everything in okay uh my final velocity is 521, and again, guys, that's going to get squared, okay? And my initial velocity is just zero plus two. Okay, I'm going to leave the acceleration there because we don't know what the acceleration is. That's what we're trying to solve for. Your velocity is 521. Yeah, it's a, it's a gun. So a, a bullet moves very fast. And where did you see the 521 in the... In the question it's are you on number five a, a, a bullet leaves a rifle with the muzzle velocity of 521 it's jeremiah uh, it's wait, wait, wait. it's oh, up here sorry. you see 521 you see it okay yeah all right okay so um delta x here is 0.84 so this is basically two times acceleration times 0.84. Okay, guys, so let's um, let's go ahead and go through the algebra. You know what? Let me go ahead and put my... Uh, let me go ahead and put this here to, so you guys know we're multiplying. 2 times acceleration times 0.84. Okay, let's go through the algebra. What's, what's 521 squared? kind of a big number is equal to yeah. guys can someone tell me what's two times point eight four is so before I can solve this for a I want to do what's two times point eight four it's like this times this times this I want to just multiply two times point eight four can someone do that for me that is yeah, one point six eight. Wait a minute, I could have done it in my head. Why did I use the calculator? I knew that. Thank you, Angelina. Okay. Now, guys, I'm trying to solve for a. So, how do I get a by itself? We uh, divide yeah. two. Yeah, um, we, you would divide. So this is one point six eight. That no. goes away. Whatever you do one side, you have to do to the other. So when I put that in my calculator, and guys, you should get a really, really big number for your acceleration. And again, meters per second squared. And guys, it should be a large number. Think about it, guys. It's a gun. A gun has a very, very large acceleration. Uh, well, a bullet. A bullet has a very, very large acceleration coming out of a gun. Oh, wow. Is it already 3 o'clock? I didn't realize it was so late. Hey, guys, if you're already comfortable with this, feel free to sign out. Um, for those of you guys who want to stay on, I'm going to continue to work out some more problems in the 320. I'm sorry, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to keep you guys so long, uh, but um, if you want, if you guys want to sign out, feel free to do so. Um, I don't even what answer scared. did you get? Yeah. This is what I got. It's on the screen. Yeah, so it, it should be a really large number. I'm oh, sorry. It should be a, real quick. Yeah, say it again. My bad. Real quick, could you go back to number four, just real quick? Yeah. Thank you. Hold on. Did, did I? I think I deleted it. Erased it. You know what? It's going to be on YouTube. The video is going to be on YouTube. Okay. 
All right, guys, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna keep working out some more problems. Um, um, but if you, if you, if you guys think you guys got this, you're free to go. Don't let me hold you on any longer. Um, but for those of you guys who are gonna stay on, I'm gonna work out some more problems for you. Any questions on number five? No, sir. Okay. Shall we keep going? Yes. All right. Let us keep going. Let us work out some more problems. Again, if, if, if you guys feel comfortable with these problems, you are free to go. For those of you guys that are staying on, please stay on. Okay. Hold on. Let's see. Yes, um, this will be on YouTube. Um, someone messes me. I feel bad. Whoever gets shot with that, <laughs> yeah, that's a um, that's a large acceleration. Um, bullets do have very large accelerations. Um, but yeah, I am putting this on YouTube. Okay, let's see. I want I want to kind of skip around. Um, let's see. What do I want to work out next? Six, 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 six seven. Yeah, six is fine. Let me see. Let me look at number six. Since you're skipping around, is it fine if our number, I guess, when we're solving the problems, are missed number two? That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so you said number six. Um, an engineer is designing a runway for an airport. Several planes will use the runway, and the engineer must design so that it is long enough for the largest airplane to become airborne before the runway ends. If the largest airplane accelerates at 3.3 meters per second squared and has a takeoff speed of 88 meters per second, then what is the minimum allowed length for the runway? Okay, this problem is very similar to number two. Um, very similar to number two. You know what, since this problem is similar to number two, let us skip this and move on to one. Because you will work out this problem like you do number two. Uh, because um, you, uh, you're given you're given acceleration. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. I would need help on a very abnormal question. Well, it's not exactly like number two. Because on number two, it gives you the... Yeah, well, it's it's similar to number two, but it's not exactly like number two. We can go ahead and work it out. Okay. You know, let's go ahead and work this out. Mr. Taylor. Yes? Do we not have to take a picture of the ones that you worked out for us, just the ones we did on our own? You have to do all of them. Yeah, so, like, when we take the picture, are we supposed to just take, say, six from 15? Say that one more time. Six through fifteen. Well, I mean, the only thing. You, well, no, no, no. When you take the picture, I want to see one through fifteen. I want to see everything worked out. Okay. Yeah, one through fifteen. Okay, guys. Looking at number six here. Number six says an engineer is designing a runway for an airport. Several planes will use the runway, and the engineer must design it so that it's long enough for the largest plane to become airborne before the runway ends. If the largest plane accelerates at 3.3 .3 meters per second squared and has a takeoff speed of 8.8 .8 meters per second, then what is the minimum allowed length for the runway? So for this problem right here, crap. Let me do that better than that. So, so what this problem says here is that, okay, so imagine that we have a runway Okay, and let me zoom in here so I can draw my airplane. So the airplane starts off here. So pretend this is an airplane. So the, the airplane starts off here, starts moving, and here's where it takes off, like it starts flying upward. So this, you know, the, the end of this runway here is the takeoff point. So what we're asked to find, we're asked to solve for the length of this entire runway here. Okay, so let us write down everything that we're given. You know, let me let me zoom out now. 
Okay, so again, we're, we're, we're doing number six. So, um, delta E. Okay, so um, for this right here, um, so let's just plug in everything we're given. Um, by the way, guys, what is the initial velocity of the airplane right here? The initial velocity has to be what? Zero. Zero. What was the takeoff speed or the takeoff velocity just before you know the airplane um, became airborne? 88. Yep. And what is the acceleration of the airplane as it's, as it's traveling from here to here? 3.30 meters per second. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, meters per second squared, squared. Don't forget the squared per yeah. And yeah. we're asked to solve for length. So what does that sound like we're solving for? The length of the runway. Oh, Delta X. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so... Check this out. Time is not even important to this problem. So if time is not important to this problem, which equation we're going to use, guys? The yellow, red, blue, or green equation? Uh, the green one. The green equation. Exactly. We're going to use the green equation. So let me kind of make this a little smaller. Okay. So let's plug everything into the green, the green equation here. So the green equation says final velocity squared. My final velocity is 88. So 88 squared is equal to the initial velocity is just zero. Zero squared is just zero. You guys should know that. Plus two times 3.3. .3 times delta x. Okay. All right, guys. So the goal is to solve this equation for delta x because that, that, that'll tell us the length of the runway from here to here. So um, 88 squared, that's um, 7... Seven, seven, four, four is equal to, okay, what's two times 3.3? 3? 6.6. 6. Yep. 6.6 6 times delta X. Then you have to divide the 6.6. 6. Yes, sir. Oh. Yes. Then you got to do it on the other side of yes, the equal sign. Sir. Yes, sir. All right. And then that should give you delta X equals. Hold on. I'm uh, rounding to the second decimal place. Three, three meters. And that is delta X. And delta X just means change in position. It's the length of the runway. Hold on, hold on. I I I I wrote something wrong. That's that's supposed to be point three three. 
Hold on, let me let me erase this. That should be. That should be point, point three three. Okay, guys, I tell you what, um, um, let's stop here for the day. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna record myself. Working, um, working out a few more problems. Um, let me see what what I want to go towards. Well, I think the rest of these you guys can do on your own. Um, I think we should be good here. I think the, the, I think the rest of them you guys should be able to do on your own. You know what? We, let's do one more. Um, can you go back to six, please? Yeah. Like Let's do one more. You do like five more. Nah, because that would mean I'm I'm doing all of them. No, that's not true. <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> but 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 it's not. You know what? I want to do one. Um. I tell you what, let's do two more. All right. Let's do two more. How does that sound? Okay. Let's do number eight and also, let me see. Let's do number eight and then number. Let me see. I'm trying to think the last one that I did in the last class. Let's do number eight and number eleven. Yeah, let's do number eight and number eleven. Number eight says John is th driving through town at twenty-five meters per second and begins to accelerate at a constant rate of negative one meters per second squared. Eventually, John comes to a complete stop. Use kinematic equations to calculate the distance which John travels while decelerating. Okay, so let us. So let, um, let us list all of our equations here. I mean, I'm sorry, let's list all of our variables, all of our important variables. So again, we're working on number eight. Wait, if there's a constant rate of minus 1.0 meters per second squared. Mm-hmm. So constant doesn't mean. Oh wait, no. no it's no. a constant acceleration. Oh, okay. That means it's slowing down. It, it's slowing down at a constant rate. Yeah. All right. Remember what a constant acceleration means. It means for every second it changes its velocity. Oh okay. Yeah. So it changes its velocity at a constant rate every second. Okay, so John is driving through a town at 25 meters per second and begins to accelerate at a constant rate of negative one meter per second squared. Eventually, John comes to a complete stop. Ah, I want you guys to notice something here. Our initial velocity here is not zero. Our initial velocity is what? 25. 25. So he's initially moving at 25 meters per second. Then he comes to a stop, which means his final velocity must be what? Zero. Zero. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he came to a stop. So now his final velocity is zero. Okay. And what is his rate of acceleration? Uh, oh. Minus one. Yep, minus one meters per second squared. Okay. And notice we're asked to solve for the distance John, uh, the distance John traveled while decelerating. So the distance would be um, the distance would be what we're looking for. Okay. So if you notice, time is not even important to this problem. So 
what do you, which equation are we going to use that includes these four major variables? The green one. The green equation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah we're going to use the green equation. So let's just plug everything in. So the final velocity is zero. You know, zero squared is just zero, right? The initial velocity is 25. So do 25 squared plus 2 times negative 1 times delta x. Follow me? Okay. Um, All right, now I do. Yeah, and then what is 25 squared? It's um, 625. Thank you, Angelina. 625. And then 2 times negative 1 is obviously just negative 2. You know what? Let me do this. Let me just go ahead and just put um, the negative there, negative 2, because right, 2 times negative 1 is just negative 2. Now, guys, solving this equation for delta x should be easy because the distance is delta x is the displacement. So, um, first of all, I got to get 625 over to the other side equal sign. So, I have to subtract 625. That goes away. Whatever you do to one side, I have to do it to the other. Now, how do I get rid of this negative 2 in order to get delta x by tail? Because it's negative 2 times delta x, guys. So what do I do there? Divide by negative 2. Yep, divide by negative 2. Yes, sir. That goes away. Whatever you do to one side, I have to do to the other. And so that gives me... So that gives me 3... 312.5 meters, and meters is my final answer. All right, and a, a, a negative a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So it's 312. Okay. Hey guys, I'm gonna do one more, but you guys are free to go if you want to. Again, again, this is the time is 3:20. I don't want to keep you guys longer than I have to, but you are free to go. But I'm gonna do one more. I want to. I, I, I want to do number 11 because there's an important thing I, I, I want to bring out there. Okay, how many do I have on? Y'all all left me. No, I'm still here. No, I'm still here. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm here. You have like eight eight people left. Okay. Awesome. Wow, you guys are some of the best students I've ever taught. Y'all are so involved. I like that. I really like that. Appreciate it. Huh? Appreciate it. Yeah. Guys, I wanna look at I, I wanna look at number eleven. Um you know, I'm I'm gonna say something here. Looking at number eleven and also looking at number nine, guys, both these problems involve situations where our object is in free fall. Can someone tell me if our object is in free fall here on Earth, what is this rate of acceleration? I told you guys this last time. What is the acceleration of gravity? Huh? It was a specific number that I did not remember. Does anybody remember? No, this was like two class periods ago. Do y'all remember the acceleration of gravity here on Earth? Anyone? No, but I took notes. I know y'all know this. I told y'all I remember this. You have to remember that. You have yeah, them just in our head. Notes on it. It's nine. For it. Okay. It was like I know it was nine point something. Nine point eight. Eight eight. Yes. Please yeah. remember that number. Please remember that number. That, that that's that's an important number we're going to see a lot in this class. So the acceleration of gravity here on Earth is nine point eight meters per second squared. So guys, I'm telling you guys right now for both number nine and number eleven. Since the object is in free fall, the acceleration is just what? 9.8. 9.8. 9 
So that's true for number nine and for number 11. So let us look at number 11. Number 11 says, the observation, the observation deck of the Empire State Building is 381 meters above the street. Determine the time required for a penny to free fall from the deck to the street below. Okay, so again, this is the last one we're going to do together. So uh, just writing everything out. So remember, the first thing you do on any problem, just write out the, a list of all your variables off to the side. Believe me, this helps um, when solving the problem. It makes everything easier. Okay, what is delta? Um, what is delta x? Well, guys, delta x would be the height of the Empire State Building, and you know that because the penny, the penny was dropped from the top of the building and then went all the way down to the bottom. So that that was the penny's displacement. The displacement is nothing more but the height of the building. So three hundred and eighty-one uh, meters is our displacement. Um, by the way, what are we going to assume is the initial velocity of the penny? Zero. Yeah, zero. What did I say? Anytime you drop something here on Earth, what is its acceleration? Nine point eight. Yeah. Nine point eight meters per second squared. And we're looking for the time. We're looking for the time. Okay. So in other words, final velocity is not important to this problem. So out of all the equations that you see, yellow red, blue, or green, which equation are we going to use um, to solve for t? Which equation includes all four of these important variables? Red. Red. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm just going to plug everything in. Delta x is 381. The initial velocity is zero, right? Zero times some number is just zero. Um, um, I don't, you know, I don't need to put the parentheses. 0.5, you know, one half is the same thing as 0. 0.5. So I'm just going to put 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5 times the acceleration, which is 9.8. Anytime something's in free fall here on Earth, you know its acceleration is 9.8. Okay. And we're trying to get time by itself. Okay, let's go through the math. Okay. Larkin, give me just a second. I'm, I'm finishing up the Zoom call. Larkin, give, give me um, give, give me just a second. I'm finishing up this Zoom call. Yeah, you're good. Just give me just a second. Okay. So, guys, what's 0. 0.5 times 9.8? That is 4.9 times t squared. Hey guys, this is algebra. Y'all should know how to solve this equation for t. First thing first, and I'm, I'm running out of room here, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to divide by 4.9. That goes away. Whatever to one side, I have to do to the other. Hopefully you guys are following me. And how do I solve this equation for t squared? How do I get to the square root of both sides? Yes, sir. If you take the square root of that, that goes away. Whatever you do one side, you have to do to the other. And again, we're still on number 11. And I'm just kind of going on here because I'm running out of room. So 8.81 seconds is our time. That is the answer for number 11. Any questions for me? No. Make sense? No. I think so. Yeah, it makes sense. All right.
guys, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. So, the, you know, the rest you're going to do on your own.